All right, it's uh, 702. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, at this time, we are going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Financial reports with Mr. Phillips. Okay, in the regular general fund, there's a cash balance at the end of May of three million ninety-six thousand six hundred eighty-two dollars and thirty-two cents. Encumbered against that, remaining one million eight hundred sixty-three thousand dollars and ten cents, leaving an unencumbered balance of two million ninety-five thousand eight hundred nineteen dollars and twenty-two cents. I think we are with our blanket encumbrances for utilities and. and large purchase services and that sort of thing, a little bit over encumbered. So as we're cleaning those up, getting ready to close the fiscal year here in June, um, we're probably gonna have a, a balance a little, a little higher than uh, what we originally expected. Not a lot, unfortunately. We have in the school bus general fund, an $85,585 encumbrance. We're still waiting on the bus that was ordered until after the fiscal year, so that will carry over. I will be asking you on the June 28th meeting to transfer money in so that that doesn't show up as a negative unencumbered balance. Because we cannot close the year, as you, wrote, you might recall, with a negative uh, unencumbered balance. Nothing else outstanding. There's uh, in the 500s, which is federal grants, you can see we have uh, $11,986 in IDEA, $2,027 in Title IIA, $389. Not big amounts, but we do have two payrolls in June that will grow those, but I won't be able to uh, do cash requests after Friday the uh, 14th of June uh, to make those good. So we'll be asking you, uh, again, at the appropriation meeting at the end of June, to um, advance money to those grants until next year. Uh, depending on how quickly this Friday's pay is able to get posted, if it shows up in time, uh, I'll probably go ahead and, and uh, make a request, a cash request to the uh, state for the federal grants. But there'll still be some little, uh, the last pay in June, uh, we'll still need to advance money for. So that was the cash request. You've got an appropriation report, a revenue report, and a check pay report, whatever the new system calls it. And if there's any questions on any of those, I can entertain that now. And if not, that's all I have. Any questions for Mr. Phillips? Uh, seeing as there's none, you'll have a motion to accept the financial report. So any moves or a second? second? Ralph seconds. All those in favor? Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Next up is new business with Mr. Dunham. I'm oh, sorry. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Of our board of principals and uh, the board of directors and uh, advisors for this staff this evening. So I'll we'll call here to your turn. Good evening, everyone. There's um, some good news tonight because we end the school year and we're going to wrap things up from our last meeting in April when we were here until actually today. Um, First in the spring, this business wrapped up for spring music program for the year. On April 17th, we had our third grade program, which this year she did a science thing with the students described their experiments and then performed uh, about seven different songs about each experience. Um, at the end of the show, the parents would then vote on which experiment they liked the best. Um, and we used these donations along with um, donations from our first third grade talent show. Um, all those donations were made to the uh, easy and the families 
Because it's not like we It's just tough. Very proud of our third grade students. A big for the talent show. A big thank you to Mrs. Lensick and her daughter Abby. They organized it. They really ran the whole thing. I the girls did an excellent job with that. Uh, we wrapped up our music program on May 8th. Our kindergarten show and May 16th, our board trade report concert. And as always, a big thank you Mrs. Bizdo. She's doing an excellent job as our well, they, they would get the same. Here are our screen. The place is the second. Third. Right now, we're anticipating about 80 to 85 kindergarten students this year. Um, I can usually do right now. I can handle it in the summer. I can do it in the summer. I can do it in the summer. I can do it Today, we had our first day of our United Way CSS by 6. We saw about 19 or 20 students participating in that. Um, probably one of the best starts we had for CSS by 6. Um, this whole thing is going to be a while. I walked down there and actually had tears in her eyes. She said, a nice job. We were going to do this. Very well, thank you for three years. She's not saying a lot of groups yet. So that was that great to hear. Um, we're wrapping up then in May. Friday, May 17th, we have the Youngstown Symphony Orchestra. This year, the Brandon Fleischer, the conductor of the orchestra. Um, they do a great job. They get the boys and girls really into the show. Um, they learn about the instruments, how to make music. And they do songs like the, uh, the theme from Superman and Star Wars that the boys and girls really get into. So, um, just a nice, kind of a nice way to wrap up the year. Um, and then finally, just want to thank our PTO. They put on our field day. Beautiful day. A lot of parents here, boys and girls, had a great time, and that uh, was a great way to wrap up the year. Just thank you to our, our board for your support this year. We really uh, had an outstanding year this year. Mr. Zolik. Hi, everybody. Uh, you know, we wrapped up our year with what I guess can best be described as organized chaos at the middle school. Um, very successful though, we had all of our field trips, our award ceremonies, the banquets, uh, sixth grade world's fair, uh, everything went off without a hitch. And, and just like Mr. Mayor said, I'd like to thank the board for continuing to support um, you know, all of our teachers and what they like to do with our students um, and, and contributing to, uh, to a very successful year here at the middle school. Um, do have a couple things, one to end the year, uh, Mrs. Vizdos uh, is beginning to recognize outstanding choir members. So she did recognize uh, about seven members of our choirs uh, for their outstanding performances. In sixth grade, it was Peyton Hines and Darian Coulter Seeger. Seventh grade was Miranda Lucas and Edwin Kinsey. And in eighth grade, it was Emily Kaleva. And there was a tie in the boys area with Aiden Leone and Barry Pitzer. Also, this is going into next year uh, for Mr. Ru uh, we have our student council members in the middle school. We also uh, elected student council members and freshman class officers for Mr. Rubin next year. In uh, this would be sixth grade, we have Quincy Daly, Heidi Bartels, Gia Guerreri, and Callie Shaw. Eddie Pavalardo, Giada Pauline, Luke Rowan, Dylan Smesto, Tristan Toy, and Abel Ward seventh grade level. And then our eighth grade student council members next year will be Luke Gehring, Grayson Marks, Jack Staffel, and Dylan Turpin. Uh, those freshman student council officers will be, I'm sorry, student council members will be Jamie Farron, Abby McKay, Presley Novak, and Kelly Zola. And our freshman officers will be President Jacob Richardson, Vice President Elizabeth Protein, Secretary Gabby Van Party, and Treasurer Mia Wilson. Thank you. Mr. Rowan, high school? Guess what? There's a lot of pictures I have up there on the uh, on email, Mr. Rowan. My good news for the day was the uh, my kids are the high school kids are in uh, Europe right now, going all all, uh, all visiting and um, can we pass your phone around? No. <laughs> I'm gonna just tell you one of the coolest things probably that that any school in the United States has ever done, we're doing it. Joe Staffel, uh, he's, a, he's a, uh, a member of our community, an engineer. He made these coins, okay? I, I would bring a coin to the next meeting, but the coin is about this big. And the coin has, it's cut like this, 
and it's it's cut in half. So there's two parts to it. We're like a, like a, like think of like a half moon like pack. And our kids went over to Europe. They were celebrating D-Day, the 75th anniversary of D-Day. And one of the things that Paul Lindstrom, one of our social studies teachers, did was he made the kids, there's 40 or 44 soldiers from Youngstown that were killed on the beaches in Normandy. The kids researched those 44 kids, or 44 young men. They went to the cemetery where those young men are buried, and they visited every one of their graves. And they read a, I, want to, I don't want to say an obituary, but they read basically a biography. They, they, they researched and they read. So all of our kids stood around the grave and read the biography and then moved to the next grave. But before they moved to the next grave, this cemetery, if you could think of the cemetery in Washington, D.C., our national cemetery, how every one of the headstones is in a perfect line. Well, these were all crosses, and they were all in perfect lines. I want pictures for the next group. Our kids took the coin, and they left half the coin on the cross, and they'll bring the other half of the coin back here and try to find a family member to share the other half of the coin. Okay? Besides that, seeing all of the different, uh, yeah, this is the coin. The coin looks like this. So what they did was they took, and, and on the coin it says, um, Youngstown raised 1944 to 2019 Normandy. And then on the other side it says the exact same thing. And then um, on the back side of the coin it says Raiders D-Day 75, June of 2019, and it has the state of Ohio on it. And then on the other side it says Youngstown remembers. 75th anniversary B-Day, 1944 to 2009. So it's a really cool thing. And our kids, I've been getting updates from Mr. Lindstrom. Our kids are having a blast. Today he sent me a picture. It's kind of comical. It was on a bus where he must have been sitting in front of the bus and he kind of just turned around and took a picture. And I'm going to say every other seat had a kid. The kid was either like head back, mouth open, or head down like this, or just they were all like that, that like asleep. Because they, they've been on the move constantly, just just going from place to place to place. So um, I know that there's a lot of news and media, and there was this was televised huge. It, if our media could have only grasped this, and I'm, I'm basically going to try to get it when they get back. I'm going to try and get some of the kids that were on the trip. I'm going to call the media. I'm going to explain to them what we did, and I want them to see if they'll come in and just kind of cover it and, and just uh, and talk with it and talk about it on the news and give our kids a little bit of PR. It, it, I know that they video it. They have a lot of the videos, so I'm thinking if we can get that to the news channels that, that they would, they would um, kind of go with that. So um, stay tuned. I'll, I'll give you more. But that's all I really wanted to talk about. Um, thank you. Next up, we have Mr. Farron. This is Pierce Food Services not here. Mr. Farron is. I would like to reiterate here. what Mr. Rowan just said. I just talked to my daughter before I came in here. She's having a great time over there. The only thing she got mad at me about was I didn't, the first time I called her, I forgot about the five hour time difference. <laughs> it was like three in the morning. So she wasn't real happy about that. I just let her call me now. But like you said, they're, they're having a good time over there. She is beat. They're going from seven in the morning to 11 o'clock at night, and they're on the move all the time. But you know, it's not it's not athletics, but I just want to say what, what they're doing over there is awesome. Well, one of the coolest pictures you can see is our kids are standing on the beach and they wrote something in the sand on the exact on the exact beaches where our soldiers were coming and they're standing in front of what they wrote and all of our kids that are that are students in our building are standing right behind it and it, it, it is a really cool picture. It says re readers oh. seventy five so. Yeah. And and the, and the kids just wrote it in sand and then they stood behind it and very, very cool. You could follow, you could actually follow all of the action. Let me read this from Mr. Lynch. God bless you, Mr. Um, announced that more pics on Raiders D-Day 75 on Facebook. So if you have a Facebook account, Raiders D-Day 75, and they have a bunch of pictures on that. How many of our students went? Do you remember? Um, I'm going to say there, there's there's about 40 kids, but some of them are graduates, and some of them aren't even in the high school yet. And and we had a group of parents go with with um, a lot of our kids as well. 
Uh, Mr. Kaigon, I know he's there with his son on there. So we, we do have, um, have a, a handful of parents that also went on the trip with the kids. Okay, athletics. Athletically, you know, we, we were after down um, very successful spring season. Uh, we had track, we had a state qualifier to shop with Jordan Lowry. Um, didn't do as well when he got to Columbus, and you know, just it's it's one of those things that normally when you get to that state meet that first time, you hope you're not a senior because you're just in awe. Of it. That's that's just the natural thing. You're you're down there. Uh, unfortunately for Jordan, he didn't perform the way he wanted to, but you know what? He he got there. That, there's not too many people in the state of Ohio saying they were in the, the state finals. You know, for for any sport, let alone. An individual sport like he had with the shot, but uh, our baseball team first first NEA championship in the school. Our baseball team won an NEA. Uh, softball team went to the regionals. Uh, ended up getting beat up pretty bad by a team that ended up winning the state. And you know, the team, you know, we talked about how, how good they are. The team we got beat by a champion. They went seven games through the state tournament to get up one run. I mean, that's, that's incredible. You got a state semifinal game they play in, and they go five innings with the team in the state semifinal. That's, that's they, they're very good. But, you know, it's, it's just one thing, you know. Successful spring season, there was no question about it. Fall sports, they're already underway. Soccer's underway, football's underway, cross country's prep. I mean, we have everything going on already, and we've been out of school for two years. Very productive season. Um, booster golf outing tonight. I just want to say that you got the all call. It only took me, Mr. Donald, two times tonight to do that all call. I only had to erase it once. Um, but, you know, with what the boosters do, if you can get out, if you know anyone who likes to golf, get out and support them because they do so much for these kids. They do Friday, June 28th. Friday, June 28th at the Lakes of Firestone. Thank you, Mr. Fairman. I do not have uh, Corporal Hartman representing the police tonight. Mr. Lewis, comments uh, from Mrs. Lewis. Mr. Cubic Transportation. Mr. Pagnotta, we are a small district when you have your director of facilities and technology uh, traveling overseas with our, with our kids and his son, of course. Um, we're a little disheveled here tonight. You see we don't have a screen. Um, PA is working. We moved the, the board meeting from the 17th to the 10th, and uh, I think we had some communication issues there. But uh, my apologies for not having the, the screen working, and we would love to see the pictures, but I, we'll get those out on the, on the website and Facebook uh, for people to see. Um, down to Mrs. Lowell. Actually, I do have something. Something that was just introduced to the House of Representatives is House Bill 239. It seeks to reduce the amount of time Ohio students spend on standardized testing. I know we're all clapping for that, aren't we? It's supposed to begin, if passed, with the class of 2022, so it's still in the process at the House. So that's just something to keep, it, keep an eye on. Um, I, I'd just like to ask for a short recess. I just have to look at the rest of the room. Yes. Okay. Can we take a quick recess? Thank you.
At 7.23, we are re-adjourned. Uh, next up is for board discussion of Youth Intensive Services contract for the 2019-2020 school year. Mr. Dunham, can you elaborate? Uh, as, as you saw in the letter, I'll be recommending that we continue with YIS, Youth Intensive Services, for 19-20 school year. Reminder, YIS is a mental health, school-wide mental health behavioral intervention program we had in place this entire year. It's free of charge, and it's to, uh, elig to, to eligible Medicaid uh, students. Parents uh, consent to services provided by YIS, and they provide licensed mental health professionals on site at the K-12. Worked out well, and we would like to continue with that same service for the 19 school year. Any board discussion on that? Uh, next up on the agenda for discussion is radar before and after care program for the 2019-2020 school year. A number of the resolutions you'll see tonight are annual uh, reoccurring uh, resolutions, radar before and after care. We've had this uh, for about five years now. Uh, ask for your continued approval of the program and subsequent approval of Jennifer Frank as the director and coordinator of the program. The program's shown steadily uh, steady increase in enrollment and profit over the past three years of includes worthy and needed service to our community. Any discussion on that? Uh, next is the Raider Marching Band and Choir Senior Trip Approval for 2020. Seems like it's a long ways out, but it's not. March 27th and 28th of 2020. Uh, asking for your approval for our senior members of the marching band and choir at the high school to attend a trip to New York City, be fully chaperoned and transported, uh, provided by a licensed motor coach company. And by doing it now, they can get locked into the rate and uh, get the approval. Uh, we've waited until later in the fall, it's going to change. So. Any more discussion on that? Next up is the school resource officer agreement for the 2019-2020 school year. Actually, it's 1819. This last year, we're a year behind on it. I don't know if it says that on the agenda. It doesn't. Yeah. My apologies. It should say for the 1819 school year. Uh, the district portion is $36,350 for the entire school year. Fortunate to collaborate with Beaver Township from a financial and uh, obviously a safety perspective. This has been ongoing for a number of years now, and uh, again, approve uh, that payment for uh, this past school year. It has risen somewhat, but not not that uh, not that much over the last number of years. But certainly, a, a worthwhile uh, agreement that we have with Beaver Township. Any discussion on that? Yeah, I guess just out of curiosity, why is it? Yeah, why, why is it a year behind? That's when we're invoiced on it. Uh, okay. Honestly, they perform the services and we pay for oh, the yeah, services. Yeah, I was just curious as to why the, you know, all the contracts we usually do. I had a time to do this. Any other discussion? Uh, next up is uh, the transfer of funds from the class of 2019 to the class of 2020. I know this is something that we generally do every year. Uh, any discussion on that? Remaining funds from the class of 19 go to 20. Uh, I'm not sure what that amount is, but uh, this is. Uh, if you would have that, unless Mr. Phillips and those are able to talk about this happen. It be a financial report, but uh, it could change from, number one, that's a paid financial report, and it's after all bills are paid, which is usually not until mid-July or so. Any discussion on that? Uh, next up is the biannual review of drug and alcohol testing program. In your letter in your packet, you received 2431.02, that's the drug and alcohol testing students in non-academic activity statement. Um, I'm recommending that we continue with drug and alcohol testing of students uh, in non-academic activities. The policy recommends a biannual review of the drug and alcohol testing program to determine its effectiveness and, and to implement any changes as needed. Um, 
what I also just passed out to you is the uh, actual guidelines or procedures, the logistics in terms of how this is communicated to students and parents and how the, uh, the uh, drug testing actually procedurally takes place. Uh, it's in my opinion the policy is appropriate at this time, the policy itself, and uh, if there's any changes, it would be more, more procedurally than policy. This has been uh, in place since 2014, so it's entering our sixth year. Any discussion on the board uh, regarding that? Yeah, so I, I noticed in the, the policy we were emailed at least, it said it was non punitive. So, Correct. I mean, what, what From an academic standpoint, if a, if a student athlete were to, to uh, be a non negative uh, test, there would be consequences in terms of uh, playing. Uh, you'd have to go to uh, a counselor, uh, program alcohol counseling, but it would not affect them academically. So it's not punitive, punitive that way. Okay. So then, whenever, if, if a student is, the, say they take one test and you know, they fail, um, that's a procedural. They, that's a procedural. Do they, do they have a second? Yeah, actually, there's, yes. Kind of, so that's kind of like an easy thing to. Well, in fact, tonight I have uh, a two representatives from on-demand drug testing who the company we're going to be working with this year, and they could probably speak if this is appropriate time or not. Yeah. Uh, we have Megan and, and Ruth here, and we'll talk about uh, the five panel, the twelve panel, talk about urine samples, uh, uh, anything else that they saliva, hair. Um, as far as to answer Mr. Christian's question, we have uh, three violations. The fourth violation, they would lose eligibility in that uh, sport for the rest of the season. So it's in the pack I just just gave you procedurally. Yeah, no you know, changes. I would love to hear this report too. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you want me? Um, sorry. Can we make a discussion? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Okay. So um, good evening, everyone. My name is Ruth Babish. I'm with um, On Demand Drug Testing. I'm also a licensed counselor. In the state of Ohio, and I've been working as a business consultant and drug free consultant for about 12, 13 years now, um, and working as a, as a chemical dependency counselor for the last six years. So I've been working with schools as a uh, prevention specialist as well over the last few years, so I appreciate the opportunity to come out here today and to discuss the drug policy. I'd like to address the question, and you just uh, probably if you don't mind, uh, about something that's easy, easy to beat. Was that the end of the question? Yeah, kind of, you have one test, and then punishments don't happen after the first one, like if they're testing to make sure it's not a false positive, I guess. Certainly. Right. When we do an intake urine drug screen, we're doing the drug screen, they're going to include testing for adult drugs and there are things along those lines right on the side. If we have something that's non-negative, we are going to be sending that out for confirmation testing. So that's not going to be a worry at that point. When we send it to the lab, we're going to be using uh, gas spectrometry and mass uh, light fraction to actually get a quantitative level of compound. So we're able to actually determine if there's a metabolite in someone's system. We're able to get that level. Once we get that level, depending upon what the substance is, we will determine if there's an actual right to have that substance in the person's system. Prescription, as an example. If there's not, if it's a substance that would not have a prescription, let's say marijuana, for example, or, or cocaine, something along those lines, um, then that would be released to the um, proper individuals at the school at that point. And the lab test is what if anything's going to be going on. So if I read the policy correctly, the first offense is a 10% reduction in extracurricular activities as far as anyone who's in athletics. And if it's an extracurricular activity, non-athletic, we're looking for a two-week suspension, you are doing this off of memory at this point, so I'm, I'm guessing I'm not. Is that correct? Okay, good. Um, and so it's not getting away with it so much as giving these individuals an opportunity to rectify their negative behavior. So when we come up to do drug testing for a school, we're not on a fishing expedition. And what I mean by that is we're not trying to catch kids. We're trying to deter them from future use. We're trying to educate them. Also, as, as something that I'm a huge proponent of, with a first offense, we are having the children go and speak to a professional counselor to determine if there is a need for further treatment. Unfortunately, as a counselor, I work with people who are battling addiction. I have an active case of about 70 people, and many of them started using when they were 14, 15, 16 years of age. So it's not unheard of. It may not be heard of in this community, which, you know, I, I'm 
certainly hopeful for, uh, but it's not unheard of as far as, as statistical data is concerned. So the way that this policy is set up here uh, at South Range is that if it's a first offense, um, we have a non-negative that would come up on a urine drug screen. We would send that to a lab, all confidential. We would get the confirmation back from that, and then the process would go, go forward with that. So we'll be able to identify the individual, we'll be able to uh, let them know that the consequences to their actions are serious in nature, and then thirdly, we're going to be able to address it in the end for their health treatment. And not to interrupt, I know you have a presentation, but how, how does our policy, I know you work with other schools, how does our policy kind of line up with other schools they work with? Honestly, very, very similar. Okay. And, um, So this is something that we're, we're not creating. No. We're not, we didn't recreate the wheel. We're doing something no. that's standardized. Right. Okay. And I'm making wine, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> I, um, I'm Ivy Wilson. I'm the director of bond demand drug testing as well. I've been there for five years. And I've helped other school districts in the area help develop their programs. And this is what the administrative part of it. One of the questions that's often asked is, what are you testing for? Um, great, obviously. Oh, I'll go talk about this. I got a new fellow. So that, that includes, if a kid's vaping, that would include that as well, correct? Correct. What's the percentage of false positives? For the instant for an area of school like this. Oh, we're looking at the uh, We actually have instant, but I did not bring them. I apologize, but I will submit those to the board. Uh, our instant tests, we love to that we receive them on every package that we get. They give us um, detailed information on what the rates of false positive are. Um, and then again, with the confirmation testing, we will move that out. Confirmation testing is going to include the um, level, threshold levels, which will help us to be able to determine if someone actually um, used the product themselves versus just being around. So that's why we always do the confirmation testing. Just throw it out. Yes. Well, I'm just going to address Taylor and Terry. We've been doing it since 2014. Our district, we've had two false launch areas. So in, in the number of tests that we've had, we've had two. And then um, Taylor, just to kind of clarify, if a kid tests positive, the first time, whatever it is, the next five tests, that's not a random for them. They're automatically, we get them out of the class before we call everybody down for the random. We would, Mr. Farron and myself, Somebody would walk down, knock on the door in the classroom and say, could I see so-and-so? Bring them down to the high school office, in the nurse's clinic, in the restroom. They, they would be tested before we call, hey, can the following students come down and list out the 30 kids or the 40 kids that we're doing a random on? They would be pulled out before that. We do it usually in a cycle of five. So if they tested positive like in January, the next five random tests that we have, they know. We tell them as part of the meeting that we have with the kid and the parent, the next five tests, you're automatically getting pulled. It's not a random for you. It's whenever we test, you're getting tested. But they, they, so they don't know when the next test is. They don't know when it is, but they just know whenever it is, they're getting they're tested. Getting tested right. In all reality, we don't know. Until the day of, generally, yeah. is when we find out. Yeah. We really don't want to know. Yeah. We don't want yeah. to know. And we, we don't select the kids either. We let. We let the company select the kids. The kids are all assigned a number. They do a, 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 random, a, like a random like lottery, and those kids those kids are selected, except for the kids that we have to because they tested positive or something like that. Or on occasion, it's happened where we've gotten a phone call from a parent that would say, "Look, could you please make sure that my son or daughter is in the next random?" Generally, we don't get a barrage of those requests. But generally, when we do, we try to include that kid per the parent's request to have them in that next batch of games. And so we, we do this for basically as many students as we can through the transportation thing. So we have just about like probably half the sophomores by the end of the year, almost all the juniors, and almost all the seniors. Well, that's true with the transportation. For, for them to drive here, they have. For parking permits? Yeah, yeah it's, still, it's still rare. 
So, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, so we're all, they're all in the pool. Yeah, we're all yes. going to get every yes. single kid. No, so but we have to drive in. Yes. The, the, change, the change that's occurred in the last two years, we have what we call a draw the line test, where every single student athlete, marching band member, parking pass holder were tested all at once within the same day or same couple of days by the drug testing company. We've gotten away from that and now it's just random. It could be before the season starts, it could be the first day of school, it could be the last day of school, it's 24, uh, 365. There, it is no longer draw a line, it is random, chosen and, by the company. And it's academic challenge, it's student council, it's the place, it's, it's almost pretty and much the extra drug For the most part, for the most part. I'm, I'm, I'm personally uncomfortable with, with drug testing, I mean, as many kids as you can. Uh, I'm sure there are, there are benefits to it, just from a privacy standpoint. Um, I, I believe that you have, uh, you know, until there is evidence or probable cause, I think that, um, I think this is a little bit I'm going to back up, and I probably should have read this to begin with. Part of the policy, and there's probably three bullet points, and that's really what I think I look at in terms of uh, the overall umbrella of this testing program. It provides for the health and safety of all students. We know there's issues out there. Undermines the effect of, effects of peer pressure by, by providing a legitimate reason for students to review, refuse to use alcohol and illegal drugs and also encourages students to use alcohol and illegal drugs to participate in the treatment program. My biggest thing is we're giving kids, trying to give kids a reason. Look, I'm going to get drug tested. I can't use, I can't do this. The peer pressure involved. Are we perfect? And I'm by no means anyone's brother's keeper, so to speak, but I do feel a commitment that we need to do anything we can to help monitor and help to protect kids from the, from the use of drugs. This is by no means a catch-all. And, and somebody already said it, it, it's not, well, you said it, it was, you know, we're not trying to, uh, how we've caught you uh, smoking, or that's not it at all. It's we're trying to protect the greater good of South Range students by, you know, when you look at how many districts use drug and alcohol testing, there's not 90% of the state of Ohio. But I'm gonna tell you, there's a good many, and obviously we be foolish if we thought this isn't an issue in South Range or anywhere in the state of Ohio, certainly is. Is it invasive? Um, is it a right to play football, soccer? It's a privilege. It's certainly not a right, and I think that this is one of the things that come with it. Of course, the board would always have a chance to say, look, we don't want to do this, and, and I would respect that. But, um, for the last five years, I think it's been a positive program for us. And those parents that do have kids, uh, to me there's some peace of mind with that. Just my just I would just add, I mean, so we're we're a drug free workplace where I work and you do not get hired without taking a drug policy or a drug test before. And then we're on the uh, same type of a random type I, I agree. I mean, I, I'm, I think we do need to educate, you know, our kids on on the uh, the uh, both health and legal consequences of drug use. Um, I think I think we do a good job of that. I mean, you know, there there can always going to be students that, that don't pay attention to that. But the students, to me, that don't pay attention to that, I mean, how many are we able to? Uh, what is the percentage that we actually deter for doing this? And I mean, with, with I don't the, think we with, measure that. I mean, frankly. I feel like that would be a, a, a good step to, to try to measure. I know we can't take down names, but is it going to take down numbers? Or? I, I would tell you that, that it's hard to keep track of the stats. The last six non-negatives for our school are all the game. 
because we've seen a drastic increase in data. Yeah. So, and, and again, look, we're, we're doing these tests. These are the professionals that we kind of put our kids and say, we, we think that they're the ones that are, when they give the kids a test, they can tell that's a diluted sample, or this is not a good sample, or this is not a accurate um, for this kid. We've had that. We're, we're, they've tested the temperature, and they, there's no way that, that that's your, that's basically water or whatever. So we leave it into their hands for them to say that. When a kid does that, the kids know automatically that's an immediate positive. If you're trying to fake the test and you get caught, that's a positive. Whether they admit it or don't admit it, if they take the temperature and that temperature of it is supposed to be between this number and this number, and it's at 65 degrees, and they know it's painted, that's a positive test. When we make a phone call to parents, we say, look, it's a non-negative, here's why it's a non-negative, because we, that, that test was tainted. The sample collected was at 63 degrees, and it should be anywhere between 94 and 101 degrees. It's not even close. We absolutely know for sure it was tainted. So we take the directive from the company that we, we've been using, Great Lakes Biomedical, they were the ones that always advised us on that. And we didn't call the kid back to say, hey, do you want to give us another, do you want to try and go again, or do you want to, we don't give them that opportunity. We call the kid down and say, look, we know that you tainted the test. And now here's the consequences. Do you want to admit to it? If you don't want to admit to it, that's fine. You're still going to face the same consequences and still have to go through the same protocol. 10% the first time, counseling, all that has to be done before you're allowed to play. If you don't, you might not get to the counselor, but you have to have a set up meeting with the counselor before you're eligible. If it's football, one game, soccer, two games, basketball, two games, whatever the 10% is, you got to have that meeting at least set up with the counselor because sometimes it's hard for the kids to get in the counselors. And one thing I can tell you is when we started this, this has probably been the first year we have, we have deterred kids from smoking marijuana because this is probably the first year we have not had a positive DHC test. So, you know, are we testing every single kid? No, we're not. We're random testing. We probably tested over 500 kids this year and not one came back positive for marijuana. That's, that's a huge drug of choice. Yeah, that's a, a huge drug of choice. And again, it's good that we're the deterring kids. I think that through, again, through education, um, I, I think that's a much better way than, than by going through it. And, and extracurriculars, I mean, that's kind of been through the courts enough times, so like, that's, that's not even my focus. My focus is the parking pass mainly, because I don't think that one's been challenging for us yet, has it? I know, I know our lawyer says it's fine. It was, I think. It was challenging for us? It held up. It held up? I believe so. I thought, I thought it hadn't been yet. I'm pretty sure it was here. Any other board discussion on this? Or can I ask something? Uh, during uh, public participation, absolutely. Maybe he was on the solicitor's meeting. No, but I wouldn't. It's not, it's not a good team on that. So you don't test for that? Initial? We do. Okay. And you're testing for performance? Well, you, you can, Mr. Franchek, you can go on. Well, Mr. Franchek, during public participation, you can go on this. Right. Uh, thank you both. We really appreciate it. Uh, next up is uh, transportation activity fee approval for the 2019-2020 school year. Once again, uh, it's been in place since 2014, policy 5513. Uh, recommend continuing the transportation activity fee for the 1920 school year. Any discussion on that from the board? Um, do we, so for, for students that are, uh, I guess a lot less able to afford it, there, is there? There is, there is a, a sliding scale, just like our free and reduced lunch that uh, is sent to me, and uh, we'll uh, waive it or reduce the, the fee. Okay. Any other discussion? discussion? Uh, next up is a special board meeting. Uh, tentatively, we're looking at June 28th. I know I won't be able to make it, but that's not a big deal. Is everybody else able to make it? It's at 7 o'clock. 7 a.m. Only last five minutes. And I could, as I put on here, I may have supplementals with, I could have some assistant coaches or so it could be personnel. Yeah. Kind of 
Is that good for? If we want to be All right, good enough. All right, uh, at this time, uh, we're going to open it up for uh, June agenda items. Is for anything on the agenda. Uh, everybody's going to be permitted to speak for two minutes. And when you're speaking, come up for come up to your microphone. I had mentioned last month um, that I think it's important that we do continue to drug test. Um, the one thing that I would disagree with, I think, what, what, I think the policy that we place for actual drug use, I think, is fine. What I'm really concerned about being a healthcare professional is the vaping is out of control. And Officer Hartman and I talked after the last meeting, and if you don't think it's 50 percent, I, I don't know. I, I, well, I'm under, I mean, I was, I've been at graduation parties talking, my son, other kids. They estimate it's about 50% of the kids are vaping. And I think you need to have some type of a policy that maybe is a little more punitive when it comes to vaping than it is for the rest of it. I'm comfortable with the rest of it. I, I, I mean, I wish we did air instead of dirt because I think air would be better. Yeah, okay. Steve, let, let, me, let me just speak to that because we've already gone on forever with this. We are making a change with the vaping policy. It's not a board policy in terms of drug use. It is in our handbooks for board adoption and the punitive side will be the referral to law enforcement and to the courts. Okay, so you're looking at doing Absolutely. That. Okay, that's on down that I'm fine with that. Yeah, if you're going to create sort of like what Preston did. It's, it's going to be very identical to okay. that in some of the other districts. There's teeth in that. We felt good about it. We just haven't gotten, as I sent an email to you, we have not gotten our team together administratively to get it. We have a meeting, I think it's Wednesday or Thursday of this week. We should have a little bit more with it by the July meeting. Our board will be adopting handbooks, and that will be a recommendation. Because I know I've talked to a couple of you, know, and I think I don't care if it, I don't even want it to be me, but I think you should, there's a couple of doctors in the meeting. I would really like it for you guys to have some type of medical representation on there. I think Ed Pearson being a former doctor, board member, or being a doctor for a board member would be an excellent choice for that. Just because, it, I mean, I see it every day with what I do. It's way worse than what you guys even think it is. I would I agree with the issue. The abuse right now. The abuse of conservative and Adderall and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's, in the last two years, it has exploded. And I just think you really ought to, I mean, I mean, Taylor, I mean, we have a tendency to be libertarian, I get that. But if this is the point where you need to deter these kids, you know, they need to know that somebody's looking over their shoulder and they may be. Now, I'm sitting in the parking lot and I see a kid could pull out a skull can and say, chew after a baseball game. You know, I mean, it's, that needs to be deterred because oh, I think all the statistics show this baby is eventually leading, you know, we, for three or four decades now, we've beaten back smoking, which is a leading cause of death in this country by far. We've done a really good job with that. I think that the baby is, is erasing all the gains we've made in the last two or three decades. And I think anything we can do to smack these kids down and prevent them from vaping now is going to be a long term dividend in itself in your life. So I'm not sure that's going to be I, I appreciate that, Mr. Thank French. You. I know our principals were working on that. That is part of it. Am I correct in saying that, Mr. Wall? The, the only part that when we talk about punitive for vaping, if the kid gets caught in school vaping, the proposal's coming, that there are going to be work costs and fines okay. and SRO, but if that, if that individual is on a sport team and they get caught vaping, that's considered positive. It would be the very same thing as if I caught a kid with a, a marijuana cigarette, that's a positive drug offense without us drug testing them, they're out for 10% of the season. If a kid's caught in school vaping, they will not only face school suspension, being suspended from school, but they will also, um, also face a suspension from 10% of whatever season it is. So it's, they're that getting, is punitively academically in the school. Yes. Yeah. How would we handle it with our social media? There was a picture of a kid vaping. I, I don't. I don't. That's why I don't. It, have it, social it's. Media. It's a. It, I'll be honest, and this goes with everything. Social media. There is such a gray area because there are some things a school can, you know, get involved with. If it's outside of these grounds, there really isn't legally. It, it's. It's a gray area right now, just with social media with everything. Well, what if Mr. Rowan, a picture of somebody vaping. There's that kind of goes into a legal gray area. Is there any other participants for uh, public participation? Can I make a suggestion? Even yeah. with social media, I mean, you can't just leave it all up to the school or the administration. Parents have to take initiative. They can check the Facebook accounts and everything. We can only do so much. It's up to the parents. Like I said, it takes a community to raise a child. So the parents need to step up. 
Well, that too, but I mean, in this community, I think a lot of people look out for each other's kids. I mean, if I saw one of my son's friends maybe, I would have called mom. And hopefully he or she does something about it. So it's not just us, it's the parents too that need to step up. Good point. Any other participants for public participation? Seeing as there's no, we're going to go back through and vote on everything. Uh, first up was a youth intensive services contract for 2019-2020. Do I have a motion? So Amy moves. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, Terry seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next up is the Raider before and after care program approval for 2019-2020. Do I have a motion? Uh, Terry motions. Do I have a second? Second. Taylor seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next up is the Raider Marching Band and Choir Senior Trip Approval for 2020. Do I have a motion? I motion. Terry motions. Do I have a second? Second. Any seconds? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next up is a School Resource Officer Agreement for 2018-2019. Do I have a motion? So. Taylor moves. Do I have a second? Ralph seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next up is a transfer of funds from the class of 2019 to the class of 2020. Do you have a motion? motion. Terry motions. Do you have a second? Second. Amy seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next up is a student drug and alcohol testing policy number 2431.02 for the 2019-2020 school year. Do you have a motion? Terry motions, do I have a second? Second. Amy seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. Taylor opposes. Motion carries. Let's, uh, Who's good? We'll call. Okay, so for student drug, Terry Lally? Yes. Taylor Christian? No. Corey Yoko? Yes. Royal Plants? Yes. Amy White? Okay. Next up is a transportation activity fee for the 2019-2020 school year. Do you have a motion? Uh, Ralph Boobs, do you have a second? I second. Terry seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Last up is a special board meeting date. This will be for Friday, June 28, 2019 at 7 a.m. Do you have a motion? So. Taylor Moves, do you have a second? Second. Amy seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next up is non-agenda items for public participation. Everybody will be held to two minutes for this as well. Any participants? Okay, seeing as there's none, Mr. Dunham, uh, district update. Thank you. Good evening, so. As you've heard from the building principals, uh, we had a great end to the 18-19 school year. Uh, as you might imagine, we were preparing uh, uh, this month for the opening for that August 19th. First day of school. We have, uh, as you see out in the hallways already, we're, we're taking things out of room, starting to redo classrooms, whether it's paint, wax. Um, you know, we have people that have really hit the ground running since the last day of school. You heard from going principals as well, and I'll say it uh, and just thank everyone publicly as board members for all that you do here at South Range. The calls that you get, the meetings that you attend, the, uh, some of the tough decisions that you make. It uh, doesn't go unnoticed. We have a, uh, a good board that has uh, intentions of uh, uh, good intentions for all of our kids and our community members in mind. So again, thank you for all that you do for a successful, uh, past successful school year for the 18-19. And uh, we're really looking forward to the 18-20 school year with, uh, with lots of uh, great ideas that will be coming, uh, that we'll be presenting in July and August and, and carrying through for the start of the school year. So looking forward to it. But once again, thank you for all that you do. Okay, thank you. Uh, next up uh, would be executive session, and we would be going in for Ohio Revised Code 121.22 and Board Policy 0166 for the consideration of the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee. 
consideration of the purchase of property for public purposes or sell or other disposition of an unneeded, obsolete, unfit for use property at competitive bidding. This will refers to the North Lima Stadium Memorial Field. If premature disclosure of information would give an unfair competitive or bargaining advantage to a person whose personal private interest is adverse to the general public interest. And finally, to discuss relative to security arrangements and emergency response protocols for the Board of Education. Do I have a motion? Ralph moves, do I have a second? Second. Taylor seconds. Mr. Phillips, roll call. Taylor Christian? Yes. Barry Lally? Yes. Ralph Wicks? Yes. Amy White? Yes. Corey Oakley? Yes. Board enters executive session at 7.57 p.m.
What did she say? You were bringing up something about movies and tests that doesn't even exist. Perplexity is removed from the market. Why did you say something? You don't know. Why did you say something? Yeah, the point is already been made. And I put it in. 
it, I've got a thing on my computer that will say PM uh, prescription management system. I can click on that and it goes and searches Jan for you. It keeps all the information on my system, puts it in the state system, searches it, and it pops this report and I can look at every controlled substance you filled for the last year. And if I want to expand it, I can expand it to every state that we have an agreement with, which is most of them that have this type of system. That's the thing you Florida or wherever. So if I, you know, if I know you went in Florida and I want to see that, I can put Florida and expand it. it. I get one the other day, the medical marijuana is popping up. I get one, I get this guy, he's coming in for, he's coming in for hydrocodone, which is uh, like, like morphine. He's coming in for that, he gets Valium, he gets, uh, he's a drug most of the, most of the, probably, probably one of every two, at least one of every three prescriptions I fill, isn't really medically necessary. It's because the person is now physically dependent on this drug. They're not an addict. Well, the doctor could walk away. If you're the doctor, you, the last thing you want to do is wean off because every month they're coming in and they're popping down. $60, $70 for offices and every single month, month after month after month. So, it's like our blood pressure. You know, every, every 60 days. You know, doctors, there is zero medical marijuana. There's zero use. I was talking to Pearson at a graduation. And he said, he's a lady that he works with, one of the nurses that he works with, did an oral um, THC marijuana, did one of the extracts, one of the little oral things, ended up in uh, shoot intensive care for. The stuff that you're getting, you're getting these extracts that are potent as anything. He said, he, had, he said, I've got a guy that's a CEO of a major corporation in Cleveland, started doing medical marijuana. He said, he's like, fine. Well, this guy got really ticked at me because I wouldn't fill his other stuff. I said, if you're on medical marijuana, well, I don't understand why. So I have no idea what the interactions are with this. Well, my doctor put me on this. Well, it's fine. If your doctor wants to dispense the rest of your drugs, that's fine too. But, you know, but you know, you're eating lemon dosey dose from the pot pharmacy up in Warren. And I know the kid that runs that is a total sellout. AJ Carabello runs a total sellout. For AJ, it's all about the money. It's all AJ cares about giving as much money as he can. But it's, I mean, it's bad. It's in the vaping is out of control. Here's South Carolina. Oh, you're a No. Oh, no. Jan, it's 50%. When I tell you it's 50%, it's 50%. You didn't think anybody would tell me. No, I don't think I don't think we have near like the plot problem and the harder drug problem that the one they were still camp was a disaster. Drug task force guy flat out told me. He said, if I told you the number of kids in Canfield that are on, you know, that are heroin addicts, no, it wasn't that. Heroin. That are addicted to heroin. He said, Harry, he said, Paul, you can't feel it. He said, you wouldn't believe the numbers. He said, if I told you the numbers, you'd tell me the exact. They got the money. They got the money. Mom and dad leave money laying around. They just, you know. Uh, I don't know if they're saying that. First of all, how did they do it? Baby, baby? Because that's like, maybe. Like, maybe. But like,
Donna D. Donna D. Yeah, Donna. Yeah, Brenda. Oh, she's scary. Yes. She said, "How dare you do that to my graduating class of my daughter?" Yeah. She was furious. That guy couldn't even get out on the stage, right?
big, you know. She's like, <laughs> I'll let the parents tell the parents, you know, my wife and I liked going to that neighborhood. We had no idea because my son doesn't wear anything at all. Yeah, no.
He's the only one who speaks up. Yep. Oh. 
not want to do that. <laughs> well, when you're ready, you let me know. Oh, they're going to be going to the graders. No, no, they're called um, checkers. Yeah. They're not the checkers. Brenda Hammond 
in um, Dan's show. That's all I know about it. For the superintendent's position? Mr. Kitty, we're fired. We called one. Oh, you're talking about I'm talking about, I'm talking about superintendent's position. No, I'm talking about my boss. You're boss. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Rich for my blood. My parents didn't work out of money. 
you know, we could have calculated. Oh, uh, I guess, yeah. But like for our AP exams and stuff, they like checked our calculators to make sure they were like clear. You have 300 people sitting in the room taking an AP exam? Really? Yeah. <laughs> my class was 366. Wow. And literally every one of my school class taking AP exams. That's why I got you here. It is 8.47 and we are back in open session. Uh, we have some personnel. Mr. Dunham, can you go through that? We begin with the approval of the following teachers, aides, and nurse for the United Way Success by Six Summer School Program. Teachers Susie, Susie Koulianis, Allison Zwingler, Jerry Less, aides Carla Bear, Stephanie Coleman, Sue Durr, Andrea Seidler, Michelle Coletis, and nurse Kim Peterson. So I have three to approve for the fall, the fall and transportation maintenance workers for summer of 19 at the negotiated hourly rate as per the SRBOE and SRCEA agreement. They are Mary Kohler, Ken Alquist, and Carly Yankowski. Approve Eric Bodine to perform bus body repairs at a rate of $28, hours per, $28 per hour as approved by the Director of Transportation for the summer of 19. Mr. Bodine will be a reimbursed for supplies pre-approved used as per documentation received, reviewed and approved by the Director of Transportation. Approved Paul Munson as a 2019 Junior Senior Prom DJ at a rate of $250 for his services. 
approved Paul Kubik as an OBI onboard instructor for the 1920 school year at a rate of $20 per hour. Uh, approved Samantha, I'm sorry, approved Samantha McMahon for three days extended time as a special education teacher as per the SREA, SR Board of Education negotiated contract for the 1819 school year. Accept the resignation of Joe White as a part-time classified aide, effective May 31st of 2019. Approved Dean Frederick as an unpaid volunteer assistant football coach for the 1920 school year. Approve an unpaid maternity leave of absence for the 1920 school year for Aaron Hartz. And then I have three supplemental contracts to recommend. Uh, Joanne Kane for news letter, newspaper advisor the last two, Katie Toy, high school cheerleading advisor, and Nathan Toy, assistant football coach. All right, so, uh, Mr. Phillips, can you please, well, first off, do I have a motion uh, to approve everything besides Katie Toy and Nathan Toy? I have a motion. Uh, moves, I have a second? Second. Any seconds? Mr. Phillips, roll call. Sure. This, this, is, this, is for every, this is for everybody besides Katie and Nathan. Everybody. Yeah. Taylor Christian? Yes. Harry Lally? Yes. Ralph Wentz? Yes. Amy White? Yes. Corey Yes. And then next up, we have the approval of Katie Toy as high school cheerleading advisor and Nathan Toy, assistant football coach. Do you have a motion? Ralph moves. Do I have a second? A second. Terry seconds. Mr. Phillips, can you go through a roll call again? David Christian? Yes. Harry Lally? Yes. Corey Yoko? Yes. Ralph Wentz? Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, next up, we have adjournment. Do I have a motion? So. Taylor moves. 80 seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We're staying. We're, we're adjourned.
Because it wasn't your application. I am not more comfortable here. Well, simply because, like, I, yeah, I'm, I'm still sure. unclear on what I'm allowed to talk about and what I'll be in trouble with that next door. How many so apply? Ballpark. Um, Four. Well, so yeah, it's, I mean, it's over to your folks. No, over, sure. over, over town, you're 20. Um, over <laughs> town. I mean, like, it's over town. Or in Las Vegas. <laughs> Off the center of the quest. She's great, but just like some of the things I'm just like, Mom, I heard it eight times. I want to go to bed. <laughs> oh, my. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good night. When's the next board meeting? Are you allowed to say? You have a special at 7 o'clock in the morning. No, I don't do special. No, 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 I do 2 7 a.m. Oh. I don't do 7 a.m. Um, the, the next one after that, 15. I don't know what the third one is. 15th of July. 15th of July? 15th. Because the Distinguished Alumni Committee meets an hour before that, I think, in the meeting room. If you want to be on that. I'm so upset about that, I could cry. Well, oh, I have cried. But that doesn't mean anything. So, how do you get to find out who my boss is? 